The secret of growing is not not to fail. We all fail. Sadiq, it says, fall seven times at least. So don't get crazy if you fail. It's a normal human being thing to do. In the physical world, before you walk, you probably fail two, three hundred times. You bang your knee, you bang your head, you bang your shoulder, you bang this. You're a little kid. Before you talk a whole word, you probably talk thousands of syllables that make no sense until you're able to get them together. All the things that a human being does, it takes a long time to do it. To do math, to do English, to, to do your script, to do... It doesn't happen. An animal right away, he's born right away. He eats. If he's a cow, he, you can milk a little. Whatever they do in their life, there's no process of growth. There's no process of failing. But us as human beings, we fail when we're born. We can't walk. We can't talk. We can't do anything. We're a total failure. We are born a total failure. Nothing. I held the Baruch Hashem. They're very cute. And that's why Hashem made them cute. Because otherwise, total failure. I don't want anything to do with you. But Hashem made babies look cute. Imagine babies were born five feet four, five feet six. Crying in the middle of the night. Go cry. Get yourself your own drink, you know? <laughs> I'm not getting up at two in the morning. Hashem made them very cute. But the truth is, he's born a failure. He can do nothing. Zero. Can't talk. Can't walk. Can't do math. Can't do nothing. All he can do is his diaper. And then you have to change him. He does nothing. So Hashem created us to fail. And then to grow. And to f- crawl. And then to walk. And then to fall. And, and that's how a person grows. He doesn't expect us to be perfect. But from your failure, if you're able to stand up, and you're, you're able to grow from that failure, from the snake bite, you are able to grow. You know what? That's the only way you can grow. The only way for true growth is to have failed and to have overcome, because then you know that you can overcome. Otherwise, you don't know. Maybe, I, maybe if that test comes to me, I won't be able to. doesn't mean you should go looking for tests. You'll get, your, you'll get enough coming without you looking for it. Well, Hashem has the whole thing set up for it. You don't have to look for it. There's no question. All the things in my life, I just tell you from my own experience, all the things that I stopped, and that was a lot of stuff. I was brought up, I watched television, and I went to the movies, and I listened to rock and roll. I was a, a, a regular kid in those days. I did all that stuff. And, and, and I was a big television watcher because my head, is, as you can tell by now, is a, is a very fictional head and a very imagined, you know, so I sat there and of course all my friends thought I was some kind of weirdo and I watched Star Trek and I watched Star Wars and I, and I read Tolkien and I was very into the other world and the middle world and the other world and all kinds of fiction and it's not a boy's thing to watch fiction. They all thought I was nuts. I was like, let's go see Star Wars. They're like, that's the one movie we're not going to. And how did I give all that up? I just woke up one morning and said, God, that's it. No movies, no television, no rock and roll. It's all done. It's impossible. You can't do that. And you know, if you do that, it won't last. I started with one thing. I'm not watching television anymore. Very hard for me. And I failed. I failed. I said I wasn't watching anymore. But, 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 but. then the Giants win the Super Bowl. I mean, ah. So, Hashem, you don't really care if I watch sports. I don't want you to watch the Giants. There was a science fiction show after that. And I failed. Failed. And then I tried again, and I failed again, and I tried again, and finally I was able to give up television. Now I said to myself, one second, Meshuggah, television, I lived, I lived. Mama, I used to sleep till 2 o'clock at night, I needed it, I had all the excuses. I had to unwind, and I need it, and it's good for me, and if I watch at night, I can learn better in the morning. Don't, don't ask how that works, but, it, you know, I'm relaxed. I had all those stories. When I finally gave that up, Right? I gave up my failures because I didn't, you can't give it up in one shot. I finally gave that up. I said, wow, if I could do that, let me try movies. Maybe, maybe I could do movies. You know, television, movies, the same thing, maybe. You know. But my friends go, and when I'm going to do Matsu Shabbos, this is my private thing. My friends don't know I give up television, but now I have to tell them I don't go to movies. They're going to give me the, eh, what happened you get from? And you think you're better than us? And we get that whole thing. And I really want to get that whole thing. You know, because, and I got that whole thing. And it was yes, and it was no, and it was only certain kind of movies and that. And finally, from the failing of the television and, 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 and winning, I was able to stop the movies. And then came rock and roll. To me, I'm a musician. That was like, I had all the excuses that everybody has. It doesn't affect you. It's just music. Who cares who wrote it? Who cares what? I'm listening to it. I learned Gemara, and I can listen to Gaisha music. It doesn't affect me. And like, why do I have to give that up? And it was probably of all the things, now I'm sure that's not to everyone like that, but I'm a musician and I was deep, deep into Chas not rap, it didn't exist in my day, it wouldn't have 
couldn't have existed in my day. Uh, the dirtiest word that was ever used was, was the, the English word for Gehenna, and they took that off. They took that off because it was, you couldn't use such a word in music. Yeah, you couldn't use such a word. The English word for Gehenna, which you find translated in art school. No, nope, they took them off the air. You understand? So to me, I was like, eh, you know, Zeppelin, this, that, all this stuff. Eh, it doesn't have an effect on me. I don't have a bunch of chai screaming, you know, kill them, then bill them, then chill them, you know, and then will them, and everything rhymes, and you know, and, and destroy the whole world. And I didn't have that at all, right? And, and it was a very big struggle because my Yetzirah said, no, come hang out with me. There's nothing wrong. The words are clean. And I looked at the strength of television, and I looked at the strength of movies, and I said, Tina Turner, it's over. All your tapes are out the window. Led Zeppelin, you're gone. The doors, you're finished. The Beatles, it's it's out of here. And then I said, and then I said, but now where am I going? What music am I going to listen to? And I got my first Shlomo Kalabach tape, and I'm like, I'm going back to the other music. (laughs) And there was a very big void, because the Yitzhar does a very good job, because Goyish music has the beat, it's cool, it's got the words, it's got everything. And he's selling a great product. He's got lamb chops and scotch and everything that you need. And then I searched and I said, I won't listen to rock and roll, but I'm going to listen to uh, Yanni <laughs> because it sounds Jewish. And I went to a concert, but he's not Jewish. And it's not Jewish. And it doesn't have he- holy words in it. So, but, you know, I stayed there for a while. It's a, it's a fight, girls. You don't win right away. It's a fight. How did I stop listening to rock and roll? And I'm a musician, and I have a lot of respect for Jewish music. Really, Shreki's great, they're all great. But from a musician's standpoint of view, it's different. It's very different, because the Tomei side has more lamp chops to offer. There's nothing to talk about. So how did I give up rock and roll? And of course, every time you go to CBS, they're playing the one song I love. It's, you know, they haven't worked out. It's all right. I, I call a business, and the phone is on hold, and it's like, how did they know my favorite song? Like, why is that playing? You understand? And it's it's a fight, and it's a fight. But you know how I got I got rid of my 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 non-Jewish music because I got rid of my television and I got rid of my movies. So my struggles with those became my anti-venom. When a snake bites you, the only thing that can save you is the anti-venom. The anti-venom is made from the venom. The thing that saves you is the thing that bit you. Your growth, your growth comes, I don't know, Ezra Max was saying some lines over there, everybody was writing, I couldn't follow him, but I'll tell you a line. Your, girl, your growth comes from your struggle, comes from your failure. That's where your real growth, because if you can say no to something, then you can take the next step and say no to something else. And that's what Hashem said in this week's parsha. He said, Moshe Rabbeinu, The snake bit them. Let them look at the snake. And the snake that they're looking at, if they can overcome and they can do tshuva on what they said, and they can look past the snake to me, that will be their refuah. This is all part of life. This is all part of growth. No one's perfect. Everyone has to go through their stuff. Use your struggles to grow. And that's why he didn't put a Sefer Torah up on that pole, because the Sefer Torah wouldn't have helped them. That's not what bit them. The television bit them, the movie bit them, the snake bit them. Therefore, they had to stare it down. They had to stare it and say, you're what took me down, but by me beating you, that's my anti-venom, that's my strength. May Hashem give everyone here and the, and the whole Kla Yisrael the strength to do tshuva, to get close to our Kaddish Baruch Hu. And when we see Mashiach and the end of that Yetzirah and the Satan, and may nobody in Kla Yisrael be cut off, but just the opposite, everyone in Kla Yisrael should be connected. Hatzlach <laughs>